you want me to sit and, and go through the process when I cut my process short because I like you. And I like you, but you know how I feel about you as well. Sweet like chocolate boy, sweet like chocolate boy. Hey, my voice is gone right now. I'm gone from Vin Petrol to Vin Diesel again, you get me? Thank you for those of you who have been subscribing to my channel, been watching the last few reviews. First of all, my, my guy Mike the Shay. Listen, when I see these two, they make me happy, man. So although I was outside saying, I'm on this journey, uh -huh. it was clear that my heart was off the journey. This is what we call black love, you know what I mean? Um, but a lot of what happened kind of proves what I said in the last video. Mike and Shay were at it on the on the public forum, right? The last episode. She was the person. So she might make the choice for him. Don't talk that tough to me, Shay. Wait, move forward. So now, like I said, they had that argument back and forth across the table. It was both their prides. They were not going to win. They were not going to allow the other other person to win. Um, so they go outside and they have a conversation. Believe and not, really? not no. I'm, I'm here for you, but if me you gonna have some issues and have some tension then there's no reason that I should be here. Now, as they're talking, one thing I'll say is, obviously, um, Mike decided to climb down. Now, I've read on, on, on Shay's Instagram that she actually apologized, but they cut it out of the video. So I'm going to allow Shay on that one and say, look, because I was like, I was ready, you know. I was ready to take her down. Like, how come only Michael's, um, Michael, I said Michael, how come only Mike is um, the only one apologizing? To how you came at me, mm -hmm. and I respond, I apologize for cursing at you. I shouldn't have said take your mother ass home, but I apologize for that, okay? Okay. Me and Shay, we've come too far, and I don't want to run the risk of... But one thing I want to say about relationships is it's important to understand that there is a time and a place for everything. I've always said this, isn't I? Time and a place for everything. For instance, one thing I want to tell you about a man's ego is never challenge us in the, in the public forum. Don't do it. Don't do it in front of our friends, in front of your family, in front of your friends. I've had a situation like that, and actually, I realised that even me trying to not say anything back the, the ego that's inside of that resides in the man, right, just pops itself up and goes, what the frick is going on, fam? And that's how Mike felt. Like he was saying to the boys later on, how do you think I handled it? He's like, look, I felt like I was in the corner. That situation with Shay, that's what I've been afraid of. Did y'all feel like she was backing me in the corner? I felt like I was being backed in the corner, bro. I felt like you had to state your case. You know what I'm saying? So for us men, when you challenge us on that kind of level in front of everybody, it's an alpha, you know, it's animalistic. It's like a lion, um, seeing another lion, and the lion decides to come and pump his chest right there and then in front of the other male lion. The male lion also, okay, you ready for it? And that's how we are, we're animalistic in that sense. And so a part of us will never allow that to run. And in fact, we'll always feel embarrassed and, and ashamed that our woman, our woman, I'm not saying a woman, our woman decided to challenge us in front of everybody else and make us look stupid because that's how we're gonna look. I make sure everything I do, I ensure you never feel like less than. And I made you feel like less than. Yes, you did. And how so? The way you just communicate to me in there, in front of everybody. The way you just communicate to me in there, in front of everybody. The way you just communicate to me in there, in front of everybody. If you gotta choose me as a person, choose the other person. I'll pop smoke and you'll lose out. For Mike, I understand why he kind of defended his corner. There was a time and a place. It does not mean that Shay can't challenge Mike. I want you to understand this females as well, because there is a time and place for everything and you're allowed to rail him or rail her, but just not in public. Same with a man as well. Like, I would say it's less so in a man because obviously our ego runs, but I, you sh don't rail your woman in public, man. You know what I'm saying? Making her feel less than worthy than in front of everybody else. Let's do this in private. So when Mike and Shay decide to have a conversation, you see that an understanding came very, very quickly. And even looking at um, Shay's facial expressions, you can tell that, you know what? She didn't want to leave. Um, Mike definitely did not want her to leave. Give me a hug, bye. Yeah, I thought you said take my mother ass home. Okay. Let me carry your bag for you. Oh. He knew that it had escalated too far, but because of his pride, he had to say what he had to say. That's what he feels like. He had to say what he had to say. And so when they were outside, he apologized, he climbed down. And the reason why he had to climb down is because, listen, if I love you, I'm going to climb down, Rude Boy, if I care for you, in the early stages. And what I want to say is that 
a lot of people can a lot of men can understand that process in the beginning because it's called the honeymoon phase in the honeymoon phase there's adrenaline there's dopamine all of that kind of stuff running through your system and so therefore apologizing being forgiven is easy you know how you first start a relationship in the beginning everything's so smooth and easy that's what we're talking about here hold on a minute that's what we're talking about right here but after five years or two years Suddenly the, the, the dopamine is kicking off, the honeymoon phase is over, now you're having to make a choice to forgive. In the beginning you're not making a choice, you're doing it out of motion. But now you're in a relationship and you've been like maybe two, three years and the honeymoon phase is over, you're making a conscious choice to forgive. And this is where relationships often fall, people don't realise that they now have to make a conscious choice to forgive. Um, what was interesting obviously between them two is the fact that when they came back into the house, Mike completely ignored Shateva. Like, just ignored her. Mm. 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 I'm glad he got his woman back. Like, he came in the room with the bags and he was like laughing, giggling, da, 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 da. because for him, he's already chosen. This is why I keep saying to you women as well, men know who they want to. When they, you see, with Adam and Eve, right, yeah, Adam didn't know what he needed. But when he met what he needed, he knew he needed that. So for us men, yeah, when we meet you, we know we need you. Like, from the jump, we see you and we know that we need you. So therefore, he's made a choice already. He made a choice early on. That's why I was saying that earlier. I was saying that Shateva, keep your mouth closed. Like, because you were saying stuff like, mm, 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 after the room, coming out of the room. But you didn't know that he hadn't chosen you. He had already rejected you a long time. But this is a game show. He has to continue the process. And also, um, what Shay, what Shay, 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 what Shay did actually was actually force the narrative of an answer. And listen, ladies, you can do this, but this is not, you have to choose your timing correctly. And when I say choose your time correctly, I mean there has to be an extended period of time that you guys are talking and then you can make that clause of, listen, make a choice. Either me or whatever you're doing because you're not being serious about life, let it know. Do you get what I'm saying? That, that you can make that choice, you have the power to do that. Um, but you have to build up that rapport, do you know what I mean, to be able to do that. Um, so when Shay decided she was going to leave, all the power was in her hands. I always say that the power is in the woman to what? Walk away. You have that option. If you feel like a man's not serious, for instance, Aaron and Angel, Angel has the power to walk away, just like Courtney did, just like Stormy had to do in the end. In the end. And Angel can do the exact same thing. But if you stick around, the power's in my hands. You're still playing my game. You're still playing my game. How many of you females have been in a situation where the man is messed, maybe the man's messing around a little bit and you're not feeling it and then you just know, I'm not going to contact him, I'm not going to call him. All of a sudden, he's calling you, he's texting you, chasing after you. Listen, when he does that, don't, don't, don't call him back. Don't text him back. Do you know why? Because now you've taught him the lesson, yeah? And a lot of guys are not going to change. They change for the temporary basis. If you weren't doing it in the beginning, I think, um, who said it? Uh, Stormy said it. I think Stormy said it. No, 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 it was, um, Ashley said it. Ashley said, listen. He and I are two different women. And I think she has a mode she wants to put her man in, and she's definitely trying to put Alex into this mode. I am done trying to change men. You need to find someone that you like from the get. You need to find someone that you like from the get. You need to find someone that you like from the get. Like, you want to get with somebody who you know, like, it's like this from the jump. Like, you don't want to be trying to steer somebody in that direction. No, you should be like this from the jump. Because there are enough people in this world for you and for me. You understand? Don't waste time with somebody who you're trying to make a project. And so when we talk about Mike and Shay, um, them two were ready for the relationship, but there were things they had to work out, kinks they had to work out, for instance, the child situation. But in that scenario, when um, Mike came in the house, he just ignored Shateva, and Shateva knew from then, one, this guy went after this girl, after saying, leave then. And two, when he came in the house, he completely ignored her. Didn't even look at the direction. Just kept on moving. Yeah? Because he was already chosen who he wants. And let me tell you something, Shateva, uh, I won't rail her too much, because I don't want to, but what I would say is, I noticed the arrogance on Shateva's side because she had a body and she because she knew that she was attractive in a certain area, thinking that that's what held a man. She said it to Shante that, oh, I know that Mike likes me. Mm. And we talked about you. Mm. We talked about Miss Shay. Okay. You know, I don't know who he gonna pick, you know, out of you. He gonna pick she, me. So tell me, 
How do you feel about Shay? I mean, I respect Shay. I think Shay is a beautiful woman. I think she's a beautiful businesswoman. If you're good on kids, if you don't want kids, why are you wasting your time with a guy that wants kids? So why haven't you ever asked Mike if you know Shay don't want kids, why is she still in the running to be your boo thing? Honestly, I just don't even think that's a factor to even bring up. Arrogance was like, mm, darling, you're gonna find something hard coming your way. Um, you're gonna find some truth coming your way. But what I would say about Shitaba is that I really appreciate her honesty. Um, one for obviously going to speak to Mike and say this and I'm going to stand away, but I want to make a correction. You're not going to stand in their way, Shatava. You just can't compete. In the heat of the argument upstairs, you went for what you wanted. And I don't feel like I can come between that. I want to make that very clear as well for females too. Never try to make it what it isn't, okay? It's not that you're not going to stand in the way of you two getting together. No, no, you cannot compete. Deep it. When a man has chosen, you cannot sway the mind. You can sex him. I've told you this. You can have an affair with him. You can steal him for a little while, but he's going back to where? The woman that he says that he wants. Deep it. You understand? So what I'm saying to you is that if someone don't don't try to make it like, oh, um, I was I'm in the way. You're not in the way. You're trying to compete and you cannot compete. Because the man has already chosen, he knows what he wants. But I appreciate saying goodbye to Shitava is clarity of of who I truly connect with, which is Shay. And now that she's gone, man, I'm ready to spend my time with the woman I care the most about. Appreciate your table for coming down there and, you know, bowing out. Secondly, I appreciate her. Listen, this is one of the most magical black moments ever. I know I'm deep. I'm kind of going off the mic thing. I'll come back. It was most, one of the most magical moments I've seen on, 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 on a TV show. And it's because if you're, if, you're, if you're watching this and you're not black, you won't, maybe you won't understand. But for us as black people, we've been so divided for such a long time that when you see black women or black men coming into unison and working together for the better interest of the group, right? You see something beautiful happen. So listen, guys, you know what? So I just got done talking to Mike and, you know, basically I told him that which I had in the kitchen when he followed you because he didn't want you to leave. I can't break that connection. And I can only respect that. Like, I came into this saying, you know, I'm not here to make friends. I came here for love. And my thing is, maybe with me, I need to learn to accept good people in my life when there's good people around me and not be this bitch and not be this mean person. You know, you guys are amazing. Shay, you're amazing. Don't do that, Shatala. We are amazing women that can all be friends, that can all grow from this, and can respect a great relationship. Because often we're crabs in a pot trying to drag each other down. So when Shatira came in and said, listen, Shay, you know, um, I appreciate what you and Mike have, and I, I, you know, I'm bowing out, and uh, you know, you're a beautiful woman, and that, that, just showering good words, right, of encouragement. Like, when they were crying, I started crying. I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm an emotional person. So when I see people crying, I begin to empathize and begin to cry. Um, don't judge me. <laughs> so, um, when they were crying, I was just crying as well because I was seeing how great this is. That black women, like she said, black women coming together and being friends. It's not me how, it's not catty, it's not us trying to drag each other down. We know we're in a competition, but we're not trying to finesse each other. And that's so beautiful, you know what I'm saying? So, for me, I rate Shatayla for that and I, I appreciate her on that level. That's the discussion they had outside, actually. They were talking and saying that, um, uh, I, was, I was noticing that, obviously, she, Shay actually mentioned that, you know, you were talking to me about finances, you're talking about obviously having kids. I, right. I feel like the choice is obvious. Right. When so we when sit, you hold on, that. when you, you, when you sit in and talking financing, and then the request is to have a kid, and then the request is to have a kid, and then the request is to have a kid, and then you have to be like, hmm. Never let a man ask of you something out of this world, and he's not giving you something out of this world. Do you see what I'm saying? Because what Michael, I remember I kept saying this, I've been saying this for the last few episodes. Mike's been asking for this kid is something out of this world. And ladies, do not accept a man asking you something out of this world if he's not prepared for himself to take to, to do something out of this world for you. Don't don't accept it. Don't accept it. Because what he's asking of you is something above and beyond. 
And that's what Shay, that's what you're asking Shay to do. So you can imagine if Shay's getting, uh, I can I can agree and understand why Shay would get annoyed. For instance, the rooming situation with Shatabla. I can understand where Mike is flirting with Tiffany. Why it's annoying because you're asking me to do something out of this world. Do not think that when you ask me to do something out of this world, I'm doing it just because I want to be a friend. You know exactly what I'm trying to do. You know exactly where we're trying to go. Do you get what I'm saying? And Mike knew that. That's why you have to apologize. That's why he had to climb down. Because he knew he was asking for out of this world. And not only that, he's found a good woman who would willingly do that for him. So yeah, that, that was important as well. When, when Michael's apologized, I love Shay's face, man. Shay's face was like... Uh, I apologize for how I responded to how you came at me. Mm -hmm. And I respond, I apologize for cursing at you. I shouldn't have said take your mother ass home. But I apologize for that, okay? Okay. It was like slightly beaming underneath her skin. It's like she was beaming, but she didn't want to beam. And then also, I think she also felt a little tinge of, you know, her climb down because her pride also was there because her pride was saying, listen, I'm going to make you eat them words. But I think, you know, something that an apology can do, yeah, when someone genuinely apologizes to you and, and they care about you and you care about them, it can remove the facade of that, I'm strong, I'm tough. I, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Because that... All that wall came straight down. He apologized, and she didn't know what to wear to smile, to smirk, to, to, to be sad, to be happy. Like, there was, there was all lots of emotion. Relief, maybe, was probably the main emotion that she was feeling at that time. And she was, st and one thing I always tell you about look at the con eye contact. She kept the focus because what she wanted to hear was from his lips. That's why she kept the eye contact. She wanted to let him know, listen, I'm fully listening to you. I don't want to be here, that's what she was saying, but you're going to force me to be here, and I I'm ready to walk away. And this is the key thing ready to walk away if it comes down to it i'm ready to walk away you know this is the key thing we have to learn from ready to love be ready to walk away if it not going the way you need to go i already said this mike never had a choice to make because he already chosen but he's not presenting the fact that he's made that choice because when you're talking to shanta back in episode like six he was saying that ah oh, you know um on one hand shanta present on one hand you got a girl who you want but it's actually just not having a kid. You've got Shatabla, who you got as well, who's beautiful, attractive, da, da, da. It was never a choice because he always wanted Shay. He just needed that situation to be um, sorted. And so men, sometimes when they're in that predicament, are waiting for the perfect storm. They're waiting for something to clear so that they know that I can proceed down this route. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes men make stupid decisions because they're waiting for this right-hand side to work. But then they're, because they're waiting, they're impatient and they go to the left-hand side. And so like in the Bible, Abraham was given the promise and said to him, no, Abraham, you're going to have a child. And yet, when his wife said to him, listen, go and sleep with Hagar, he said with Hagar and they got Ishmael instead of Isaac. When you're not patient, you end up birthing something that you don't need. You know what I'm saying? That's going to cause you further trouble down the line. So if Mike had gone with Tiffany or Mike had gone with Shea Tabor, he would have ruined the Shay issue. And look how beautiful they were at the end scene when they were talking at the end. Kind of like you. You like me kind of? That was kind of good. <laughs> Give me some more of them gummy bears, girl. Mm. Nah. That took a lot. Plus, Shay, your edges were lit. Oh, my God. Your, your edges were... Mm. Um, so, when they were talking at the end as well, you can just see that the, the chemistry there. They even started kissing at the end. And, you know, one thing that the guys have kept on saying is that now the two... Now the girl's gone out of the picture. The extra girl. Clarity. Saying goodbye to Shatava is clarity of, of who I truly connect with, which is Shay. And now that she's gone, man, I'm ready to spend my time with the woman I care the most about. But now that Tiffany is out the picture, my head is uh, a lot more clear. And this is one thing I want to say to you as men, men who are watching this, and if a woman is watching this and you've got a friend or male friend, please pass this on to them. They need to watch this. Having more than one option brings no clarity for you. It brings confusion. It brings um, opportunity to mess around. It brings um, misinformation. And it brings imp and it breeds impatience, which causes you to make a decision you're not ready to make. So when, when I think Alex said it, he's, he got clarity. Mike was saying the same thing. When Shay got the pressures off him now, he can focus on Shay. Why focus on Shay? Because you really had an idea that you wanted Shay. So Shatava was just there as make weight, paperweight. Do you see what I'm saying? All of this... Is what happens in real life. You're talking to ten, three different, four different girls, or one, two, three different guys, and there's a problem. Do you know what I'm saying? Nobody's saying put all your eggs in one basket, but be courageous in how you choose somebody. If we're going down that lane, go down that lane. Do you know what I'm saying? And women, don't be afraid to ask questions. What is this early on? Because if you see that the person is going to force you to take all your time, you got to make sure you guard your heart. 
I'm taking all your time, calling you at different hours of the day. Um, I'm the only one that you know you're talking to, or I'm forcing you to talk to me all the time. When I say forcing them, as, as in I'm I'm taking your time, and you've got to ask what is your objective. You've got to ask that question. You've got to be ready to ask that question because I could be a time waster. I could be using you. Do you know what I'm saying?